So let me start by saying to every one of you business owners that if you noticed a high increase of competition in the detailing business, it's not because, because you became a detailer and then you start seeing it more, but uh, it's actually the same way as it was before. It's not that. You're right, it has increased by a lot. And let me explain to you why and why you shouldn't worry about it. It seems like everyone is into detailing now. It seems like if you search it on Google, on Google your competition, you see a bunch of industries, a bunch of businesses of detailing. But it's not just in detailing. It's in other industries as well. This is usually what happens before a recession. Welcome to the Wings Mobile Detailing Business and Automotive Podcast. The only podcast that will guide you on how to start and grow six-figure companies. As our team expands from one business location to worldwide domination, you will get step-by-step -step insights from a millennial franchiser and franchise owner with your host, Andre Mezzalera. Some of you may be listening to this on... Uh, iTunes, Spotify, and I'm sure that a lot of you who are listening to this and clicked on the title, seeing that uh, you're going through this moment right now, of you're seeing a lot of detailers out there, and you're feeling, so, <laughs> perhaps you're feeling a little bit scared uh, of your own detailing business because you're seeing so much competition out there. If that's how you see it, you know, if you see other fellow detailers. And the reason I'm starting this podcast is because I've been getting a, a couple of questions, not a lot, but from a few detailers here and there that has been noticing that. What I say is not only to not worry, but this is happening with all industries. If you speak, if you speak to, because I don't only speak to business owners in detailing, detailing business owners. I also speak to other business owners in a variety of different industries into the construction part, even roofing, real estate, um, absolutely real estate, real estate agent especially. Uh, if you're a real estate agent out there, if you know some real estate agent out there, they're probably talking to you about the amount of competition, that's the amount of increase in competition that, incre uh, that happened in the last few months. Same with detailing, guys. I'm sure you guys have noticed that as you may think that this is happening because detailing is easy, it's easy to get into, right? Some people think that detailing is easy to succeed in the business of detailing, but I'm against that. It's not easy to succeed. It's not as, it's just as difficult or easy as any other business. The difference is, is that you get more quantity, a lot more detailers out there because it doesn't require a college degree. It doesn't require even a license from the government. Nothing, just knowledge. Just going on sometimes YouTube, listening to a Wings Mobile Detailing podcast, and you're learning how to do the detailing. That's why it's easy. Now, there's one thing. Does that mean that uh, the business itself is easy to succeed in? No, it's not. Because just like any other business, you knowing the trade doesn't change anything on you succeeding in the trade or not. Because it's easy to, to learn how to detail and to get into the detailing business, it doesn't mean that it is easy for you to succeed. So now, what does it mean to you? Well, I guess this is good news because just like any other industry, for you to succeed, you have to be great at what you're doing and you have to put hard working hours in, in all aspects of the business, into the marketing of the business, business processes, hiring, you know, hiring new employees, training new employees, how to train, creating systems, that's not all of these things to succeed in business. And then one of the things includes knowing how to detail well, how to provide a quality detailing service, right, for you to succeed in the detailing business. Just like any other business, for you to be a great real estate agent, you have to know the same thing, marketing, how to hire agents if you're gonna be a broker, uh, how to market you as the best agent out there. And then you'd also have to be great at understanding houses 
and selling homes, right? So knowing how to detail is just a one spec of you succeeding in the detailing business. Now there may be more detailers out there because it's easier to get into, but that doesn't change anything. That doesn't change how you're gonna succeed or not looking at your competition because if it is easy to get into the detailing business, it means that there are a, a, a majority of the of uh, detailers that are out there that are not promoting, doesn't have a website, but they're you feel like they're competition, don't worry about it. Uh, a lot of them are great, right? A, a, a lot of you who are listening to this podcast, I'm sure, are great. But if you guys are worried about the other ones, because there's uh, so many detailers out there, they are not, they are not great because they just started. They, a lot of it, a lot of them started as a part-time job. Same thing with real estate agents. A lot of them they start just as a part-time job. Now, if you are hustling learning how to be the best, learning how to have perhaps the best website, the best marketing team, sales team for your detailing business, and growing, expanding, and still hiring employees and growing, you are the 1% already. If you're already hiring employees, growing your detailing fleet, maybe, or a shop, you know, growing your shop, expanding your shop, you're the 1%. Because all the other 99% that you feel like it's a huge competition for you, you know, there are smaller business owners that are looking to grow. Is there a problem with that? There's no problem with that. I'm not bashing on these people. I'm just saying for you not to worry if you see quantity of competitors out there. Now, it has increased though in the past four years. And I say that not looking into any statistics. Although, yes, I look, you know, we can look into Google and can realize comparing to four years before the amount of mobile detailing businesses and auto detailing businesses that are out there. Same with roofing, same with, like I said, real estate agents. If you see the amount, there is a lot. Uh, and it has increased in the past four years. Uh, and a lot of it has to do with the economy uh, getting, quote unquote, easier, you know, or the sensation that the economy is easier. Um, and that all people start more detailing their detailing business because they see that they are profiting from it. Why do people start a business in an industry? Because they see that other people are making money doing that, right? That's why you see the huge growth in mobile detailers because it was a lot of uh, guys, young guys as well, who saw their friend doing detailing and they heard that their friends start making a lot of money. They're like, okay, let me go after the money. And people who go after the money in business always end up failing. That's why, now it's gonna sound harsh, but that's why sometimes a recession is good for the economy because it filters out these competitors, quote unquote competitors, these people who just got into business for the money but didn't get in the business to provide the best service of their industry, to service people the best way they can and grow their business by giving them their all. It only increased because these people are looking after money. And what, ha what happens in a recession? It levels out the playing field. Those who are just doing it for the short money uh, to perhaps show off to buy their new Nike shoes or a new a brand new car to show off to their friends and play business right attending um, creating business events playing business that's all playing business right I actually heard this in a previous podcast the difference of people who are playing business and actually in business people who like want their beautiful nice business cars they rent the biggest shop of the city. They just started off and they rent the biggest shop, detailing shop in the city with a beautiful sign on the outside without making a profit, without making one month of profit. And they already want the biggest thing. Those people are the ones that are gonna get eaten alive during a recession. And the other ones who are going step by step I'm sure you guys who are listening to this podcast who are going step by step. Don't worry about the competition. Worry about you. Keep doing what you're doing. Going step by step. Don't overspend. Right? 
keep providing the best service ever you're going to struggle a lot of times if you're growing as employee base or you're going as a solopreneur you know detailing yourself it's fine with the helper but keep doing what you're doing innovate but also it's not only about innovation it's about being consistent in what you're already doing and doing it greatly without spending too much money and messing up your bottom line because when economy is great when everybody's coming into the detailing business you'll see a huge increases because uh, there are a lot of clients a lot of demand they are paying for the service because also the economy is great like I don't like to blame the economy for anything but also the economy is great and it causes people to get into the detailing business because people are paying for it and everybody's getting money and then more people are getting into the business and it's going to create a bubble where not that there's not enough clients but that there's not as many clients as there used to be for each individual detailer that's until we get the playing field leveled out it sounds harsh if you're if if you are listening to this podcast and you were one of those who just bought a brand new car in your only first year in business you already spent um you're already spending two three thousand dollars in rent for a shop in your first year in business because you did so well and perhaps you did i'm not saying you didn't perhaps you did profit right and then you use half of the savings that you made to uh or or the majority of the savings that you made in your first year to build this beautiful shop and spending three thousand dollars of rent or more for this beautiful shop that you have if you're this if you're this guy you you know you should be worried you should be worried because i recently did a youtube video before explaining how it's not feasible for you to tell somebody that you know in your first year you already made uh 12 $20,000 a month in detail right i did a video that it's not feasible and uh, uh, people start commenting start saying check out on youtube guys start saying oh that's not true i made that you know but i did i was clear to explain in that video that it is not feasible for you to make that money in your first year and then be consistent from summer to winter through the next year you're going to have a downfall if that's what you're doing you're going to have a downfall and people who are getting into business for the money for the show the show offs they think that they're indestructible they have this type of mindset that they're indestructible and in business in any industry in any industry if you have a if you feel indestructible in business like oh nothing's going to happen because you're making saving that money and you're going to keep saving the same amount of money or even more than what you were making if you feel indestructible that's when you fall and that's why uh that's what happens in a recession those people get wiped out So don't worry about your competition. Keep doing what you're doing. Do great. Be continue doing great at it. If you want to grow a huge business, I also recommend franchising with us with Wings Mobile Detailing. You can uh it is a franchise so you can if you're thinking big about expanding your fleet, actually growing, we have an app as well, the clients can book online, all those simple stuff we have as well, training for your new employees. So instead of taking 6 months to train an employee greatly, it's it's a matter of a month or so uh with the training systems that we have everything look including a franchise uh, assistant you have your own assistant as well uh now that you're going to need in the beginning of business but if you're franchise then you're mm-hmm. taking big steps you're leveraging from a business that's already growing think big guys think big and clear all the distractions from around you all this competition don't worry about it even if it keeps on growing even if it keeps on growing the company that lasts for the long for the longest period of time are the ones that are going to win